So I've actually entered an over the board competition for next weekend. What I did today was because it's in a week's time, I did like an exercise that says, well, okay, I'm gonna do a training competition. I'm gonna go online, um, went onto chess.com and I said, right, okay, I'm gonna join this um, 30 minute um, zero increment tournament. I'd set the timer, I still missed the first match, trying to replicate what potentially may happen next week. So I was treating it like the competition was today and just to see how basically I would be faring and and yeah so as I was said we basically played this game this same um, tournament today it was a what do you call it a Swiss and it was out of four rounds 30 minutes each player and the first game, I did miss the first round, which I was beating myself for because I actually set my timer and I still missed it. And so we play as white. So I'm going to take you through the first game. So we're pushing through nice and steady with the E4. Opponent pushes down. So this is all pretty familiar stuff. So we're attacking through the center, all straightforward stuff. And we catch up with the knight. And then for this time i'm going to instead of taking the knight in the first instance i'm going to see if i can just support with the bishop and just try and do something a little bit fresh so supporting making sure that my pieces are safe they bring the queen down so i'm thinking well i don't really want to get too hearty so <laughs> we'll just take the take the knight off the board and I was expe probably expecting maybe his overnight coming out and developing then I was probably going to just develop my knight out and just do like a slow process but as soon as the queen's out I'm going mm, I'm not too sure you know it's like going to try and double dose up somewhere didn't want to get into any complications so we took that off the board so we re reverted back to type and then we took the bishop and uh, we're on the queen so the queen can take the bishop so this was definitely simple direct moves to remove pieces from the board strategically uh, i'm fairly comfortable and happy with this the reason why i was i felt like i was being cagey was i'd seen this player play against a 1900 um in the first round after i'd missed my you know my slot i thought oh, i'll watch a few games and i watched this player playing against the 1900 and he actually dragged out a, a kind of a dubious draw because i was watching the moves and i was like thinking damn this guy's strong he's really strong he's really pressuring this 1900 and the 1900 had about what was it three more pawns than the opponent but the 1900 was asking for a draw he actually offered the the player a draw but the player didn't want to accept the draw and they were playing on until eventually it, it became a drawn position but yeah it was really strong so i really sort of had my my guard up against this player because if he can do that to a 1900 i'm sure he can um, clean me out a little bit so i'm really watching my position play so I develop the knight and then bring the bishop through so just doubly protecting the pawn here just waiting to see what shifty moves he's going to come out with um, because i don't want the moves that he was doing against the 1900 so he attacks our queen so we can move the queen off the board i, I nearly did a knee-jerk reaction on my on the board on my board um because i moved the pawn up facing the bishop and i thought well i don't really want this diagonal coming in here you know queen blocking off my king but at the same token I'm really more interested in actually queenside castling. So the rook's coming through and it's x-raying through to my queen. So I've clocked this. But putting pressure onto the bishop first with a smaller piece seems more appropriate because at this moment in time there's nothing really happening in terms of the x-ray through to my queen. So then we castle queenside. So feeling fairly happy now that we've got the castling process sorted. His bishops come here potentially looking to take the pawn at some stage so 
so they start pushing down with the pawn on towards the knight so I, I, in the back of my head I'm thinking okay this is the type of stuff that we're looking at is it smaller pieces attacking the higher pieces trying to squish the king area they're using the answer process are the pieces supported that was my main question when I was looking at my um, my pieces on my mat big question and I thought well no the pieces aren't um, supported in my head I'm thinking I don't really want this x-ray anymore <clears throat> I want to get active so I became active I'm actually targeting an unprotected pawn right here so that felt like I was in the game I'm trying to turn the tables I don't think it's going to make much difference I think he's still going to push on to the knight and he's going to try and look to squish our king somehow so I'd already planned in my head basically coming here because I'll be attacking their queen if the queen comes across we can then push this pawn up and then this bishop isn't going to have much play in this area so we could do a bit of dancing with the knight while we're trying to jostle a position of types towards here on the king side if we can so they do push the pawn down so that's fair enough we just jump up with the knight and uh, attack the queen and the queen does exactly what we said they were going to do so we followed suit with our calculation so it's only like a two move calculation felt fairly safe and comfortable with that position I was toying with the idea of this but I didn't really want to mess up my, mess up my pawn structure at the moment and plus also the queen will be able to take the knight for free so oops the idea being that the queen is going to be touching onto the pawn so I thought well let's do a nice steady safe move because we have seen this player play against the 1900 and for the life of me I don't know why the 1900 allowed the opponent to do what they did to them but it still ended up being a draw but it looked a bit squishy really for against them so we're supporting this pawn now so that the knight can come back nice and safe and maybe work towards this side attacking the queen and there's no sort of back ranky type situation at the minute you'd have to get rid of this pawn so then the rook comes into the center of the board as we know rooks don't have any place in the center of the board unless of course it's to your benefit at this moment can't really grab this pawn because the queen is protecting and he's looking for an x-ray through onto our queen so that's not a really happy medium that i want to play with so i bring the queen back now just attacking the unprotected rook so he doubles up so i'm not too sure if that doubling was as strong as maybe the opponent thought it was because he's got his own pawn blocking this area so he can't really touch our knight this rook really isn't doing anything here it's kind of trapped itself because it can't go back one you know to try and get across here somehow so we bring the knight down so in a sense i'm thinking i'm going to play a little trick on this player because i think they're probably going to be looking for a draw out of this position so if i keep attacking his queen if his queen goes back here and um, then he's going to think that i'm going for a draw but there's no way made i'm going for a draw in this position so they move the queen and so we move the knight up again and then we bring the knight back down but he kind of caught me by surprise with the move because I thought he was just going to jump back again with the queen thinking he's going for a draw but the move that he made was basically saying I'm not going for a draw I've got a win here I didn't actually see their win I'm just thinking their pieces really aren't supporting each other at the moment like we said this rook really isn't that devastating maybe he's looking to try and push the pawn down here or maybe just to get this pawn off of this diagonal because maybe if they're thinking well my queen is going to come and attack it who knows so we bring our rook across now because we're now kind of focusing on maybe attacking the king side area but also maybe either pushing the pawn up to actually tantalize onto the bishop or just supporting this pawn here so they do push their pawn down so they're elevating their pawns it gives the queen a bit of space as well 
So we support our pawn nice and steadily, just uh, allowing our pieces to be supported stonewall style. So the pressure is on the opponent to continue if they think they've got a win. So all the while I'm thinking, I think I have a potential advantage here. It might not look like it because his pieces look like they're being more active and aggressive, but I don't believe they're working together. The rooks are supporting each other, but the rook is going nowhere unless, of course, it's looking to sacrifice itself somehow. So the queen moves out of the way. So we bring the knight up again, making it look like we don't have any other moves apart from putting a check on this queen. And the queen comes down, and this time I bring my movement into action. This pawn has only got the queen protecting it. So if we can bring our queen now and uh, attack, maybe we might get lucky and get that pawn off the board. Only thing that can protect it is the knight coming back and defending. But the knight is actually blocking this uh, rook from actually defending this rook. Something to be mindful of. So we bring our bishop through now, um, basically back so that we can now attack the rook. Based on the fact that this knight is now blocking this rook here. Kind of the smallest of tempi type situations. We've covered the tempo type things before. And we bring the queen back. It's um, on, the, on the rook. So it, fe it feels like a fairly nice position. Didn't really want to bring the queen back here. Really wanted it to stay more active. Really wanted to get this pawn. But you know, you have to deal with what you dealt with. So then they move the knight. So we bring our knight back now because we do have options of here. It's just that it's a little bit too much against us because he's got his knight, he's got his bishop, he's got his rook there. So the queen comes into the lair. I'm not too sure really what the queen move was because he's got the pawn behind. So there's not really going to be a multiple um, attack towards the king area here. So I'm not, I really wasn't sure that again to me felt like a kind of loss in tempo in terms of developing pieces. So at this point we can now take the rook off the ball because our position in my head um, is feeling fairly favourable. So they capture, so now we can bring our queen looking to attack the knight and the rook. Obviously we're not going to take the knight because the pawn is protecting but we could put some pressure onto his rook. Any fancy business, if he brings it here, then we can always mobilize the queen, queen back again. So there's no problems on that score. So they continue pushing the pawn again. To me, didn't feel too worrisome. I just wanted to get my pieces in the game. This knight's not working with the um, queen. The bishop's not working with the queen. The queen's not working with any other piece. It's locked itself in. The rook is all by itself, again, supporting the pawn, but it, it's all split. So I'm fairly happy with what's going on at the minute. Just waiting for the surprise tactic, though. So we actually go forward and attack the rook. And he does come with the fancy business. So now we can attack his bishop because his bishop doesn't have any um, protection on it. Like we said, the pieces aren't kind of working together. So we've got sort of free reign to run around the board a little bit with the queen. So the bishop moves back. So now we can reposition, looking to tantalize this pawn. We do have elements of the bishop attacking their bishop and doing an exchange that way. So that felt quite nice thinking of that type of situation. So he's pushing pawns again, but again, these, wow, well, the gauge bar has gone crazy there. Whoa, plus 7.62. Okay, yeah, so they're pushing pawns and basically they're locking their own queen in. I don't think I took the advantage of that, but I may I may have attempted to do it, but I don't think I probably did the best move. So we brought the knight up now, so attacking the queen, attacking their knight. So they capture, so this was their massive take fest was taking place. So he's brought his pawn down and he's still jamming his queen in. So we bring our queen with a little bit of a check on the king and a check on the rook so all these unprotected pieces or pieces that weren't actually working together as a team and um, they were the advantages we basically took of them because 
they only reacted to what we were actually doing so they continued playing anyway so we grab, grabbed a pawn and then we grabbed and we're on his queen this poor queen was just jammed in i mean we didn't do anything special and so really happy with that game especially after seeing what this this player did to the 1900 i mean they got the draw but it was the way they got the draw um yeah it was quite amazing actually so i, was, I felt really good about actually winning this particular game so strange as it may seem the second game that i played was against the 1900 at 1926 so this was the player that I'd watched play, the guy who I'd just played, and um, that particular player um, really did take this 1900 to town. So we play as white here. Again, pushed through the center with the E4. Developed straight forward and just started attacking just to try and make them feel a bit unbalanced and see if we can get as many pieces off as possible king safety just keeping it all simple and attacking through the center a simple capture and then the queen is down the queen is in the action already so we look to exchange off the queen to see whether or not he's going to do that i'm thinking 1900 yeah it probably might do but maybe they're going to go for some arty sort of moves going across the horizontal somehow so i expected that really but then he actually took so i'm like well we're going for simplification interesting times this is a 30 minute game so he does have time to think of moves of sorts so we bring the knight up protecting the pawn all simple stuff nothing special so he's obviously going castling so now we're looking to get our rooks ready challenging all the way through especially potentially putting maybe some pressure onto this pawn if we dance the knight here so his rook's getting into the party so we want to then get this rook up lined up maybe with some potential of attacking the knight it's just that this knight is supporting at the moment so we're not going to get carried away with ourselves on that one and then there was a simple pawn push here so i'm like oh he's a bit fearful but maybe he saw the elements of the potential attacks on the pawn I'm not, I'm not too sure but it did prevent us from thinking about that so because he's blocked off this um, lovely type of position for us attacking the pawn decide well okay let's start attacking towards his kingside area he's not yet castled so maybe it's going to hold him from castling and he's going to do something that's going to make him slow down and lose tempo but he castles so that's fine that's fair enough so now we push through the center here onto the pawn because we do have this pawn supporting gauge bar doesn't really look like it's a fan of ours it's basically minus 0.58 type situation but i'm like thinking i don't want to sit here watching these pawns gravitate down the center of the board i want to be able to work around the center without any obstructions uh, but he doesn't actually take the pawn he moves his knight so i'm a brief moment i'm thinking well we can just simply take the pawn and we're winning a small tempi aren't we so we, we grab the pawn but i think in his head he's thinking he's developing his bishop he's attacking the pawn and he's got this line of sight towards our king here so the bishop moves back so he's still continued with the line of sight he's got his knight here it's not being challenged at the minute so we bring our bishop through attacking a higher piece me and me arrows attacking the higher piece which is the rook kind of makes sense to me uh, so the bishop takes the pawn yep so at this point i'm thinking i can take a higher piece surely i'm not going to be worse off in terms of position on the board and then they continue with their attack okay so currently uh we're plus three on the tables at the moment it looks like there anyway yep so then they take and then it is looks like it's even stevens at the moment so now we're looking to block in the bishop and take the bishop with the king so that might be a little bit of a panic situation for the opponent but it's still showing it as kind of a draw so there's nothing to write home about but it did feel okay for me positionally 
because we're kind of up the exchange but you have to make being up the exchange work for you so I took that as a bit of a bonus that we had we were up the exchange so mini celebration and wave to me so they pushed the pawn down supporting the knight but really is trying to probably get rid of this pawn here so we move the king up attacking the bishop so he took, comes down so in essence the bishop's going to escape but not going to lose any sleep over it we're up the exchange so we don't want to get too crack carried away and the bishop goes in front of the rook i was quite pleased at that because you know the rook was having sights of this pawn here and it's momentarily blocked the rook's power base which is the files so we bring the knight down so it gives us time to actually come and attack his knight see what he wants to do doesn't want to exchange probably because we're up the exchange not too sure so we move back again challenging the knight seeing what it wants to do so he doesn't actually attack so we're taking pieces off the board now because we can kind of afford to because we're up the exchange it is a key thing it's a small key thing but you have to, i have to make it work for me so if i can reduce down his pieces then the impact of having the two rooks should start to be telling so they're to capture with the knight so we bring our knight through now potential for maybe bringing it here you know uh, getting it here causing some trouble somehow so the bishop moves probably sensing there's danger so it moves because obviously the rook did have sights on this so we were always waiting for that so we push the pawn up so a pawn's protecting it now so the rook is coming into the center of the board i think it's probably got sights of coming here putting a check on our king maybe or is it looking to exchange off which i doubt very much so what was the case for this i mean was it coming here to attack this pawn or this pawn here if it does those types of things is it not sort of like um trapping itself so we bring the knight up looking to maybe attack this square here because then we've got like a fork fork here and obviously it'll reduce down his knight so again we'll just take the knight off the board so his knight kind of looking like it's blocking some way i'm thinking he's probably jumped there to pay, probably put a little bit of a check on the king so we attack the knight see whether or not he wants to go with that but he doesn't he goes backwards so we continue with our movement here and uh, with the potential of getting his knight off the board reducing down hopefully maybe we can make use of the power base of the rooks having that extra rook maybe so he takes the pawn so now we can take his pawn and we're leaning on his bishop so winning those all important tempi so he's gonna have to readjust or not he comes down with a check on his king he's on our pawn so we move the king so he does take the pawn and he's supporting the bishop so now we're looking to trade off the rook rook's not having any of it so we can ask it where it wants to go we know where it wants to go it wants to come and go here but we want to be sort of managing his process on the board so he could have left it there for a while but we wanted to say no what do you want to do come on come and get my king so my king can get elevated so he does attack so the further up the board our king's going it's helping out the rooks maybe get maybe congesting the king's activity so the bishop escapes for a moment and uh, potentially attacking here so we bring our rook across maybe looking to get a, like a two on one on the bishop here but the bishop moves so it kind of senses that there's something happening so we attack the bishop again and the rook defends this time so we bring the king off of the line because <coughs> what they, <coughs> excuse me what they're potentially looking at doing is uh, bringing this pawn here getting a fork on our rook so I have to be mindful of those little little tricks so they push the pawn down supporting the bishop We're, so we can go up and put a check on the king king moves to the far side so it's not a very nice position for the king so we go and attack the unprotected pawn and the opponent goes and attacks our unprotected pawn so we simply can take and the opponent takes 
So now we're trying to put a bit of pressure on this pawn in front of their king. If they forget themselves, he puts a check on our king. So at this point here, we can do a bit of a merry dance if he's going to continue attacking because that little pattern here, we can just sit here quite nicely. And then there's going to be more pressure towards his king, which he's going to have to deal with. We can also elevate this pawn to assist in that situation. So he does put the check on the king and we move the king out of the way. He's looking for a discover check. So our rooks are basically on white square. So there's not going to be a check there that's going to get them off the board. So we can take the pawn, put a check on his king. So his king does move. So we move our king down now. Sometimes they forget themselves thinking that, oh, maybe the rook is protected by the bishop. But they actually move it. So he's now on our pawn. <coughs> so we move out of the way. So if he does take, then obviously there's going to be a bit of trouble for his king. But he doesn't. Puts a check on. So we can move out of the way. Our rook is supporting so we can capture. So now it's a rook against the bishop and two pawns. Should be easily adjustable. So we attack the bishop. Bishop moves. Then we attack the pawn. Nothing can actually defend the pawn if we were choosing to take. So he starts pushing his pawn. Looking at the tempo don't believe it's going to be fast enough to get the pawn down if we get a check then we can come across here so we put the check on his king doesn't move closer so we can actually come and attack the bishop through there is the pawn so now we're putting pressure onto the bishop he keeps the line of sight on the bishop but now we can really look at uh, put, you know, getting the pawn up getting the king up putting pressure on their king and sort of elevating maybe not there just yet obviously because the bishop's there but you know what i mean moving the king the pawn up bit of time this pawn is definitely just going to get taken off the board anyway and he's going to have to readjust his bishop in order to be able to firstly protect this pawn once it goes onto a white square then the pawn is dead because nothing else is supporting it his king is on the other side so they move so now we can start jostling the pawn up and put a check on the king and put another check just to make a bit of space for the pawn so then they decide to push the pawn down so at this point here we brought the king up to support the pawn in readiness to take this pawn because now there's not much that he can actually do he'd have to readjust his bishop first in order for him to protect the pawn coming down here but he doesn't have that time to do that. So the, the opponent resigned at that point. So that was a, quite an interesting game to play. I was always very mindful. I mean, they are 1900, so obviously you expect um, special, some special things to come out. But I think we, we kind of circumvented the attempts at what they were trying to do. And we slowly built up our um, advantage on the king side just taking it a bit at a time the opponent was still in the game moving the rook attacking taking pieces off the board and um, but because we had the two rooks working together i think that gave us a bit of a power base to gain a little bit more advantage and this was the last game of the tournament so this was the third game in my books third game out of four because i missed the first match so we're actually on two games at the minute two wins but it's just a practice thing for myself. I just wanted to see where I was going to be, where my head is at. And I'm not fooled by anything in terms of any results here because at the end of the day, this is online chess. And online chess is different to over the board chess in my eyes. And the reason I can really say that with good gusto in that um, there are some IMs who, you know, who want to be grandmasters and they wipe the floor with people online do you know what i mean but when it comes to actually over the board going for that gm stuff it really is quite difficult and that shows you the difference between playing over the board and playing online the stat to me the standard of play is totally different you know um so it's okay the ims just flashing their stuff and you know beating everybody um and you know it's good it's good for the ego i suppose in that sense you know but 
when they go out into the real world and they're actually facing players who are of the same level of, as them and even slightly better this is why it's so hard for them to get them gm norms yep so i am no fool i'm no idiot i'm basically very aware of the difference between online play and over the board play so any results from this type of thing is just an idea as to say well okay yes i can do this that and the other but when faced with somebody over the board even if i'd been practiced over the board and you know um i'm feeling comfortable with over the board stuff it's still totally different to online play so we played black at last in this competition so <clears throat> um I quite like playing as black because the when you play as white you're kind of almost expected to win in a sense it's like well you've gone first so you know you should be taking it to him so they opened with e4 nice move so then we just steadily as you know we just bring this knight out here opposite side and develop the knight so we just got the two knights out all pretty simple straightforward stuff and they've left the pawn here so i'm i'm willing to actually practice taking the pawn i'm not classing this as poisonous because of the way that it's set up and i'm willing to dance back a little bit with the knight if he does push his pawn down onto me um so that wasn't a bit of an issue so we actually took the pawn off <clears throat> and then he did push down but during the when i was looking at the mat and i was looking at the pieces on the mat i thought oh let's try and go for some quick and dirty stuff here yeah why not go for the quick and dirty we've got the pressure here or the pressure here oops sorry we made my arrows pressure there or the pressure there what's a man to do because if he does take the knight then he's taking the knight but then we're going to either get the queen which we're not so we'll get the rook as part of that so we'd be up material from this position it's not very often you see me go for this quick and dirty type looking stuff but i sat there and i thought well you know in the actual tournament maybe i might get this type of position and would i go for it you know because even though people you know people might not know about how to deal with these types of shock you know shock moves so if I can pull it out of the bag and make it work for me, then I'm good to go. But I'm not a quick and dirty type player, but I'm aware of those tactics. If it's openly given to me like this, I'm actually going to take it. You know, I'll, I weighed up the pros and cons of, well, if he does take, he only gets the knight. Whereas I get a pawn and then I get a major piece. Obviously not the queen, but I'll get the rook off the board. So that felt like a fair bit of compensation, if you like. So the bishop comes in and blocks the party, but still, it's not too bad a situation. So we grab the bishop, take it off the board. Gives us time to move our knight, so we're attacking here. This knight hasn't got any protection on, but I'm believing the whole development of our position at the minute is in our favour. So... What happened there yeah so he's going well i'm taking your pawn off as well then if you've taken mine off so we can go and castle now we don't need to get bent out of shape get over excited um just because they've grabbed the pawn back um let's get our position let's sort our bed out sort our house out before we actually go to battle so i was really quite pleased with that aspect you know we, we went for the quick and dirty we understood the rhythm we didn't get carried away we didn't panic because they they then could attack back or grab the pawn back so we grabbed this unprotected piece here but there is a kind of danger to taking this pawn because now the bishop takes our knight but there's a bit of an issue with that maneuver because the queen can now put a check on the king and also be threatening to capture the bishop so when i'm looking at the pieces over my mat i'm sat there going i can't believe that this is actually working 
This is not my usual style of play, as you know, because I'm more a positional player. But off of the back of that quick and dirty type tactic type thing has come this type of position where we've got another quick and dirty tactic type thing, which is the check on the king on, onto the bishop. So the quick and dirty tactics were working in this game right from the start. Don't worry, I'm not turning into a quick and dirty tactics type player. It's only if it's given to me, then I'll potentially look at taking, but it has to really improve my position. I'm not just going to do it just because, you know, I think it might do something. It has to have something nailed on. I've been re I'm watching a recent um, quick and dirty tactics um, streamer <clears throat> and I was watching a few of their matches and I was like, oh, that's um, that's impressive. Yeah, yeah. But then I, I actually looked into their account and I looked at that. I looked at them. They're, they're actually losing loads of games. They're absolutely losing loads and loads and loads of games using this quick and dirty tactics type thing. So the ones that he's highlighting, you know, are the ones where he's obviously, you know, he's had a good run of it or whatever and he's, um, he's won. But then after that, I think either somebody's <laughs> somebody's pinpointed him and all the 2000 pluses are just challenging him like crazy or whatever and he's getting whooped he's getting absolutely whooped because of this quick and dirty tactic type thing it has its place and i've mentioned that as an example because it does have its place if you catch somebody by surprise then off you go but if people get wise to that then you, you can't to me, you cannot use that type of play for longevity. You really have to look at your position and you have to play chess, not try and trick people into uh, certain moves and things like that. So that's why I'm comfortable with understanding the quick and dirty tactics. If I'm bringing it into my gameplay, my position has to be worthy of even thinking about doing a quick and dirty tactic this particular player genuinely i mean i think they're a i think they're a grandmaster or something like that um they're really high up there and basically they're showing everybody how to do these quick and dirty tactics beat people in eight moves or, or follow these gambits and you, you're going to win out and all that sort of stuff so it's like one of those um get fast that get big up get big abs in five seconds or whatever it is you know it's like it's like one of those um take those things with a pinch of salt and really at the end of the day chess is about finding those appropriate positions it's tricks are for kids and if you can bring the, the tricks into appropriate position then it works a lot better and then you're not getting wiped out of the <laughs> I mean his, his account is like it's all red 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 with all the losses on um, and it was mainly after the last few videos that he created um, where he'd shown all these gambit things working because people said oh well, you can't make that work so he showed that you can make it work because he caught people by surprise but then after that video was made you look at his account he very rarely wins a game now so i'm sort of chuckling to myself because it, it is highlighting that quick and dirty type tactics and all these gambit type things and really take them with a pinch of salt if you find in your game that the position looks okay if you deliver that quick and dirty tactic then by all means go for it okay really look at every nook and cranny because when you see those gambit type things demonstrated it's because the opponent is in the right position all of the pieces are in the right position for the opponent to have delivered that quick and dirty tactic whereas your game might not land in the same type of position as what you're seeing on the screen or what you're being taught so you have to be very careful and really look to see well okay is this definitely nailed on before you actually apply your quick and dirty tactic so that's what's happened in our game here um it was nailed on for us the position felt nice i didn't feel like i was over egging anything and the threats were there which made the opponent do something they didn't want to do and 
left a nice little um, night here unprotected obviously they took the advantage of that but then they've put themselves in a bit of a sticky situation so they continue on for a moment moving the king out of the way so we can now take the bishop off the board feeling fairly happy that we've um, carried out the quick and dirty type tactic thing with safe position as far as i can tell pawns protected bishops here i mean the bishop's locked in so when i was looking at my pieces on the board i did say well dude you need to get this bishop out man it's all jammed in your rooks really aren't even together so, so you need to sort that out even though you're on this pawn here you know it don't make no difference you've got to still still be thinking the big picture so surprisingly they're still continuing on so they move the knight so we can attack the knight just to really disturb it yep this is our system it's like um okay just keep that pressure on it if you can smaller piece attacking the higher piece potentially looking for it to jump here at some stage maybe uh, but the queen comes down looking for the exchange so at this stage i'm thinking well i i could potentially go for an exchange because this pawn is actually on the knight so if we do take we're going to get the knight off the board as well all based on appropriate positional play which has fallen out of the quick and dirty tactics blended with good position so we take take so now we can take the knight off the board so we're up a minor piece surprisingly the opponent is still continuing on so we can move the knight we could have moved it maybe back here or something to put a check on the king this side but i thought well i, I like this position of just managing these key squares here for the moment so they actually moved the knight but i did think that maybe they should have taken the pawn here so we just decided to take the pawn off the board obviously the rook may come and try and challenge that but we do have movements that the knight can make so in order for the rook to be protecting the pawn so one of the rooks does come so we bring the knight up looking to maybe support the pawn if it's going for a further push up so I'm, I'm really surprised the opponent's still playing on so this is merely now making me think i definitely need to get my bishop out somehow but we do have a smaller piece attacking a higher piece which one's going to be the choice that i make i'm going to attack the higher piece with a smaller piece and let it see what what it's wanting to do so it's moved out of the way which allows our bishop to attack the unprotected pawn it can push down or the king can come and protect king comes to protect so now we've got a two on one because we bring the rook here attacking the pawn as well but then it does like an intermissile blocking with the knight but i am thinking we have more material on the board i don't see a problem actually taking this knight off the board now so reducing down and at that point the opponent resigned so very interesting games all three of them really um the last one definitely um because i do have a beam up on it about quick and dirty tactics type thing but also on the other side of the coin there's pluses for them as we um, discussed so if you can blend them with your positional type play i believe that makes a stronger sort of set of chess um concepts for yourself rather than ending up like the poor guy who's doing his streams at the minute um and just getting kind of clean cleaned out because he's playing he's he's playing players that are positionally outclassing him because it's like it's like a naughty little boy coming up and you know he's like sort of punching the big you know the the big um the boss guy and he's punching him he's punching him he's punching him he's just doing cheeky cheeky shots and really and truly there's no real damage to them it's an idea yeah he's got an idea of doing the punch and stuff but there's no it's, there's no meat behind those punches because it, he's too small he's too weak he's not developed and that's what this guy's doing he's not developed um he's got clever ideas about the gambits yes you can do this sacri sacrifice that blah 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 um catch the people by surprise but if you're playing somebody who doesn't fall for that and who is aware you're going to fall foul because you have to play a proper chess so then when the tournament finished um sat around just watching the last few games and then up popped the screen and i didn't even think i was even getting placed or anything like that 
but it actually said I got first place in the in the tournament and I mean I didn't start the first game so I only won the last you know the, the last three I'm just wondering well I thought other people had actually won you know their first games etc but obviously it didn't work out that way and I ended up being first place so I'm really shocked but I'm hoping that this replicates the stuff that happens next you know at the tournament but <laughs> realistically um, like I said these things online just take them with a pinch of salt it's good for the ego yes you you've won a competition you've you you beating high level players all that type of stuff but realistically when it comes to real world real play knock all of that out of your head and really focus on really trying to drive home the stuff that you've been practicing and it's a different world and i'm really looking forward to enjoying the over the board experience again and wish me luck fingers crossed um maybe we can put in a half decent performance um, my target is 50 50 it's i've uh, got six rounds yep so that is my usual sort of target that's the usual performance level um but if we get the wins let's keep pushing forward for the win as best possible yeah don't be afraid of a draw if i can't find a win definitely just keep going for a draw as best possible if i'm taking a loss then it's because i've done something drastically wrong <laughs> um so on the whole really looking forward to fingers crossed putting in a half decent performance no pressure on myself want to enjoy the day and um just see how we get on